Good morning, good morning. I'd like to request that everyone stay in their seats, please. We've had this amazing plenary on participation, and now we'd like to give you all the chance to participate. You should participate not only by continuing the conversation in the wonderful breakout sessions that we'll have afterwards, but also by voting for the winner of this year's At My City Prize. You all received an envelope when you walked into the room, so you should be able to vote that way, and I'll explain that in just a moment. My name is Casey Weston, and I've had the pleasure of organizing the At My City Prize over the past few months, so I'm very delighted to see our three finalists here on stage. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the prize, it's an annual competition organized, organized by the New Cities Foundation to reward mobile applications that make cities more sustainable, more equitable, and more fun to live in. It's based around the premise that mobile apps have the potential to connect people and connect organizations and it can turn good cities into great cities. This year, the App My City Prize partnered with Google and also partnered with the Atlantic Cities. And with that support, we will reward the winner of the App My City Prize, who you, the audience, will select this morning with $5,000 to continue improving and promoting their app. As a bit of background, there were three eligibility requirements for the App My City Prize. First, all of the apps had to be available for download. So as soon as the, the presenters uh, talk about their apps, I'd love it if you could whip out your phones and download the apps right away. Uh, secondly, the apps had to have been available within the last year or so to make sure they were recent and presenting new ideas. And third and most importantly, the apps had to address and attempt to resolve a problem faced by cities and their residents today. I'm very excited to present these finalists to you, and so I'd like to um, and pass the mic to our first presenter, Lior Hassat of Kafar Saba, Israel, who will present his app, Buzz Journey. Lior? Thank you, Casey. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. I'm really excited to be here and present Buzz Journey to you, but before we begin, I want to take this opportunity to thank the New Cities Foundation for organizing this amazing summit and the App My City Prize. I really think they deserve a round of applause. Okay, so as cities are getting bigger and more crowded, transportation becomes a more complex issue. Things like pollution, congestion, and increasing commute times are just a few of the daily challenges we face today. Now, the root cause of this problem lies in the fact that cities quickly outgrow their road infrastructure. Now, a possible solution for that is to get more cars off the road and encourage alternative modes of transportation, such as public transportation, and even some more alternative modes, such as ride sharing. Now, let's discuss a few of those options. Public transportation is great, but it could be a bit complex. For example, where I'm from, from the greater metropolitan area of Tel Aviv, there are over 20 different public transportation providers. Each one has his own information system, and none of them are interoperable. Real-time information also exists, but it was not widely accessible, which made uh, public transportation seem unreliable. Ride-sharing, on the other hand, poses other challenges. It's kind of a complex. It requires daily prearrangements, negotiations, and most of all, commitment by participating parties. For this reason, ride sharing is usually limited for medium and long distance rides. Now, all of these challenges could be solved by harnessing both technology and the community together. And with this in mind, Bus Journey began. So, Bus Journey is a social transportation app that provides all means of urban transportation, either via bus, train, taxi, and also bike rentals and even ride sharing. So let's see how it works. Initially, we've partnered up with the Ministry of Transportation to get information of all the 20 operators with, sorry, here it goes. Along with their 25,000 bus stops. For each one of these stops, we provide the itinerary, and the real-time information. But more importantly, we provide a unified trip planner which spans all of these providers who can provide you step-by-step -step directions for getting from your point of origin to your destination. Now, the next thing we've done 
is add 168 listed taxi operators and incorporate into the same trip planner also real-time fare estimation along with the possibility to call the nearest cab. And additionally, we've partnered up with the municipality of Tel Aviv to provide real-time information for over 300 bicycle rental stations scattered around the town. We provide the real-time information and availability of the bicycles and the returning poles. Okay, now let's talk again about ride sharing. So ride sharing is great. I mean, drivers and passengers achieve cost and travel time savings. Society benefits from reduced congestion and less pollution and increased social equity. But then again, as I mentioned before, it's kind of hard. You have to do a lot of pre-arrangements and negotiations about uh, money, and there's also uh, the issue of commitment. So with this in mind, we thought we have to reinvent ride-sharing somehow, and it had to be reinvented as a real-time service. Now, real-time ride-sharing enables any driver to offer the spare seats of his car while he's driving, just like that. No commitment, no negotiations. Let's see how it works. This is the passenger's view. The passenger simply enters his destination and is presented with a list of available drivers who are currently driving their car on his route. For each driver, he can see his image, his rating, and also the cost of the ride, which is automatically calculated by the app to prevent any need for negotiations. Additionally, we provide you with the view of the entire route, the pickup point, the drop-off point, and all the needed details. After requesting the ride, the passenger can start viewing the live progress of the driver until he picks him up. Now again, this nature of real-time, no negotiations, no commitment, no pre-arrangements, make real-time ride-sharing applicable for short urban commutes, which account for over 80% of our traffic. Now, after both the passenger and the driver confirm the pickup, we present them with a summary of the transaction and also their carbon emission savings. We are currently running an open beta in Israel, and we are uh, trying to raise our seed fund right now in order to achieve uh, our goal of leading community-driven sustainable transportation. We plan to extend our offering both to the enterprise and to open our product as a platform to any content-driven. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lior. So as we heard before, mobile apps certainly have the potential to engage citizens in meaningful participation, not only about how they get around the city, but in other issues as well. As our next finalist, Bruno Aracate of Recife, Brazil, will explain as he explains his app, Colab. OK. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Bruno, and I'm here to introduce you to Colab. Uh, before I start, can I just ask, who, who in here is Brazilian? Can you please raise your hands? Well, a lot. <laughs> just checking my users. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank New Cities Foundation for the opportunity to be here. Uh, Collab is only two months old, so we are very, very young, and we are very honored to be here uh, after so, so little time. Um, Collab is a social network for citizenship. We connect cities to citizens. Um, before I start, I start talking about Collab, we shall look at where we were when it all began. Collab was born and raised in Brazil, in Recife, Brazil, and we must acknowledge that the environment totally influenced what we were about to create. Brazil is passing through a political situation in which the key word is change, in which the corruption must end. Our cities just look too much out of place, too big, too chaotic, too hostile. Our people, they like to do, they like to participate, they like to be proud of something. And that's, that's our conclusion. There's a huge gap, a huge valley between citizens and cities. And so, okay, our conclusion is very simple, there must be a bridge. But this bridge cannot be any bridge. It must be transparent, it must be interactive, it must be very, very user-friendly. It must promote real engagement. So, 
Having all that said, we created a, a platform that helps people solve their problems. It helps people channel their projects and ideas to the government. It's a channel for feedbacks to generate improvements in their cities. And that's why we created a timeline-based, anonymous forbidden, truly social and completely transparent social network that looks like this in its web platform and like this in its app version. Um, we are only two months old, we have already 10,000 users and we are open to every city in Brazil. Um, in Collab, uh, we believe it's truly social because you're not, oh, not only connected to your friends, you are connected to all the other citizens and to all the stakeholders in, the, in, the, in, your, in your city. Um, in Collab, you can interact with them in three different ways. Number one, reporting issues. Number two, proposing solutions. And number three, evaluating public services. Now let's talk about each of them. Uh, number one, reporting issues. We see very poor people, uh, they see a sewage problem in their city, they take a picture, they choose a, a category, they publish. Other citizens see that problem, they can say that they saw that problem too, and government receives that post and takes action to solve it. So it's very simple. Number two, propose solutions. Our citizens, they are very creative. They have to channel their ideas to the, the government. The government has, must have a way to see that. So you write a text, you choose a title, a category, you post. In Collab, you find supporters for your idea and you can co-create and co-develop your idea with other citizens. And government will be pressured to do that because you'll find a lot of supporters and then your dream may come true, why not? And number three, um, evaluate public services. You go to a hospital, you can rate some categories about that, that service in the hospital. And other citizens can, can give their opinion too about that hospital or school or any other public service. And the government can assess how their mandate is going on. And there's more. In Collab, we have a ranking. So the more a citizen participates, the more points he gets. And people usually love games, so why not play a game that will produce very positive outcomes for our cities, right? Um, well, let's talk about the bridge. Uh, all that interactions that I just mentioned are channeled to, to the, the government that has a, a platform in, where they, in which they can control each post, they can, uh, they can check the status, and they can have a voice to our, back to the citizens. So the citizens will hear the government voice reverberating back to them. So that's why we believe that putting this tripod, reporting an issue or a problem, proposing solutions and evaluating, giving feedback, with this we'll see citizens influencing their cities even more to create better cities. So, um, more than that, we'll see a citizen consciousness flourishing. We'll see people changing their harmful attitudes into, into a very positive way of breathing the cities there and in, interacting, collaborating, and participating. So that's what we believe. I'd like to thank New Cities Foundation again, to thank you all. Uh, I hope you, you, you use Collab, and I thank you very much. And I'm really honored to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruno. So each of these apps shares in common that they encourage citizen participation in different ways that shape the city, whether it be in transportation or working with government. And uh, these last two apps may seem at first blush to have a bit in common, but our judges, and I'll talk about them in a moment, um, our judges found some important differences that we hope that you'll look at as well. And so I'd like to present Lily Liu from New York City, who will, who will be presenting her app, Public Stuff. All right, thank you. Hi there, my name is Lily Liu. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Public Stuff. So, I ran across a very interesting statistic. There was a survey on citizen engagement, and what they found was staggering. 93% of people do not interact with their government because they feel as if they can make no change or significant impact. 
That's a staggering percentage. Yet, here's a typical street intersection that you might run across in most towns or cities. And what amazes me is that every single day, we're surrounded by dozens of government-based issues, from the streets that we commute on, to the sidewalks that we walk on, to our utilities, our parks, our waste and recycling services, you name it. We're always being surrounded by government services. Yet the reality is, in order for us to report or interact on any of these issues, we as citizens and residents of any city in this world most likely have to interact with dozens of different departments and divisions. And that's an unreal expectation for citizens to understand how to navigate a very complex problem. So no wonder why people feel as if they cannot participate and interact with their government. But what if we lived in communities where if we ran across something like this, very typical, we've all seen this before, a pothole. If you bike to work, biking across this pothole is not fun. If you drive, this is not fun. If you're walking, this is not fun. This competition is about identifying applications that make our cities more sustainable, connected, and fun. And so what if a user, a citizen, runs into something like this, and in two days, they can get it fixed and have the image and collaborate with their government on issues like this. This is actually something that was fixed on the Public Stuff platform. And so here's live, real-time feedback from the citizen. You guys must be ninjas. I can now drive without fear of my car falling apart. Certainly makes for a happy citizen. Now this might seem like a very small issue, but let's take a look at what's happening here. We have a happy citizen. They're a raving fan of the city now, an advocate, whereas before they might not have been. But what's also not as apparent in this situation is the fact that the city staff person is humanized. They're appreciated for the work they do. And I truly believe that people want to do a good job, whatever it is in life. And so this really helps to promote the work that they're doing. So public stuff is really focused on reversing that statistic. We want 93% of people in cities across the world to engage with their government because they feel as if they can make an impact. So our product consists of three main pieces. We have the smartphone applications. So it works on any smartphone. Now what if you don't have a smartphone? It works via text messaging as well. You can also use the landline. So if you only have a landline phone, you can connect in by calling. We have the web system. So if you have access to a computer, you can access public stuff through the web. And then on the right-hand side here, we have the back-end software. This is for city staff so that they can manage the workflow, they can manage the analytics, and they can manage the entire platform and engagement process. It's fully customizable. So it's different for each city, but it's open to every single city in the world. Now, here's how you submit a request. Your phone's automatically geolocating where you are. You can also enter in an address. You can select request types, or you can self-identify and make your own type as a citizen. You can upload a photo of the litter. We can make it public or private. And so you control the level of information you want to give your government. Let's say you have nothing to report, but you want to know how well is my community doing? What are some of the issues out there? You can look at that on the map. You can see all of the data, the images, the location. You can share it with other neighbors, or you can comment and follow it yourself. Here in Philadelphia, one of our clients, they built a widget on top of our platform. So you can search for license and inspection history on buildings. They also have information about their city leadership in the application here. You can access news and announcements that get pushed out to the resident and survey feedbacks. They change their information on a regular basis. Now, what we're doing here in the application, we're changing cities. I live in one city, but I work in another city. So I can easily pull up the new city directly in the application here. So here, we're pulling up New York City. And you'll notice completely different interface widgets, functionality. We're pulling up now Palo Alto. They're one of our newest cities on the platform. And Heart of Silicon Valley decided to use public stuff to better engage with their public. And so you'll see here very different aesthetics 
and functionality through their application. So that's a little bit about the mobile. Here's what it looks like for the web. You can interact with your neighbors, with your government. You can view requests. You can open up topics and actually have a dialogue and discussion. Here's what it looks like for staff. Now, they have a lot more information that we're giving to them, geolocation information, accuracy, street level views, which you can access here in Brazil. They have attachments, workflow that can be utilized in the system as well. We have map mashups, so you can start to layer different mapping. Show me the utility lines along with all of the issues that have been reported by our public. And there's a lot more functionality we can't go through, but here's a quick view of some of the great analytics. Data is just data, but we are giving cities meaning behind all of this data that they can access. And finally, the system is utilized to fully customize the mobile application here, so you can view it on all of the different apps. So here's an example. Public stuff is important not just in the day-to-day -day interactions with your government, but in the case of emergencies. So in this situation, Hurricane Sandy in Philadelphia, again, one of our clients, they're about two million uh, in population. Hurricane Sandy happened towards the end of last year, and in one day, they received over 5,000 issues reported 33rd most downloaded application in the iTunes Apple Store. Out of hundreds of thousands of applications out there, theirs was the 33rd most download. They saved over $10,000 in the first few hours. Now, what's incredible about this is that their 911 service ended up being bogged down from everyone calling in. So you couldn't get through if you had an issue to report. Little did people know, a lot of the things they were reporting should not have gone to 911 but they felt like they wanted to report the down tree or the electrical lines that had fallen or some of the flip cars and the other issues. So the application became very important for residents and business owners and people in the community to be able to access and utilize. Here's another issue where there was a lot of community members actually participating in this issue. It's a local park and there was gang graffiti where their children were playing every single day. This is not a great image. This is not a community that you want to bring your children to and play in. And so four days later, they worked with the local government. These are things that the local government can actually fix, right? And so they're very tangible, very addressable for the government. And now look at this park. It looks like a completely different park. And the user feedback. Thank you so much. This is why I love this city. And so again, we're creating huge advocates for your city. So this is not just a good tool for the public, which clearly it is, but it's also extremely important for us to make sure the service works for the government as well. So in Oceanside, California, we measured with them just the amount of savings they would see by utilizing a system like ours. 128,000 estimated savings in their first year. Think about it, every single request that comes through public stuff is one less phone call that the government, that City Hall has to deal with. That's 10 to 20 minutes of somebody's time that, they, that can be utilized working on something else. In Philadelphia, 91% of their issues get resolved through our system. We're now routing over 10% of all of their calls that go into City Hall through the public stuff application. In Plano, Texas, they see half of their residents engaging on the platform. It's not just about reporting issues. It could be about asking questions, coming up with great ideas for the community. Now, we're all about access on the public stuff platform, so translations are key. This is not just static translations. These are dynamic content translations. So what does that mean? If your phone is in Portuguese, everything will be translated in Portuguese. But if the call agent is looking at it in English, they see all of your information coming in in English. And so you can start to have a dialogue with people that might be speaking multiple different languages, as we all here do in this room. But we can all start to collaborate on one platform, making language not a barrier. Now, some of the neat things that we're working on, we're, our platform is completely open. And I call it a platform because we can't do everything alone. And so we started partnering with local developers. So they are now creating widgets on the platform using our open data, using other open data. And we're running a contest. This is an ongoing thing. So if you have great ideas, use Twitter with the hashtag civic idea. 
And then our developers can take a look at the ideas that are populated. The government staff people, the elected officials, they can take a look at these as well. And they have been doing so. In fact, here are just some of the different applications that have been created. In Philadelphia, somebody created election information so you can learn more about your elected officials. In Tallahassee, Florida, this is really cute. You can adopt a pet through the kennel, through a widget that somebody created and the data that they're getting on pets. In Tallahassee, they also did one about the city parks. And in Elk Grove, they did one about waste pickup and how to better improve that, and a developer created that. What's beautiful about that is these widgets and applications can be utilized in the over 200 cities that public stuff is in. We are also now international, so proud to announce expansion in the UK, in Canada, and right here in Brazil with a local company, Urbanias. We are launching with the city of Botucatu, a very in innovative mayor who would like to bring this service to the city of Botucatu. So thank you so much. We can't do this alone. We do need your vote. Uh, I appreciate the time and the support from New Cities Foundation. Thank you very much. Obrigada. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. Okay, so I'd like to explain to you all how to vote. Um, as I said before, we had a panel of expert judges, some of whom are in the room. Thank you very much, judges, who helped us to narrow this list down of, as Matthew said earlier, um, over 100 applications from 20 countries to these three finalists here before you. Um, I'm very personally very excited about all of their apps and look forward to downloading all of them to use them and and um, understand them a bit more. Um, so we'd like you to take out the envelopes that you were given as you came into the room, and you should see on the slide in a moment um, the, the voting possibilities. So please take, uh, get, take the three cards out of the envelope and choose one card and put the other two cards back in the envelope. So you'll choose the card of the app that you'd like to vote for, pink for Buzz Journey from Israel, orange for Colab from Brazil, and green uh, for public stuff from the US. Put the other two cards back in the envelope and then you can just throw the envelope under your seat. We'll come by and pick it up later. But the card that you have in your hand as you walk out the door, please deposit in the box being held by our volunteers out there who uh, will be waiting for your vote. Now a few housekeeping things before we leave. Um, I'd like to encourage all of you to head over to the Oka Pavilion next for our networking session as well as some fantastic breakout sessions. And it's very important that you're back here after lunch by 2.15. I don't see any reason for anyone to be late because it's the play plenary. So it, of course, will be very fun. Um, so thank you very much for your participation today. We encourage you to continue participating and to vote as you head out the door. Thank you. <laughs>